Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Stain. Thank you for the society for letting us present our research. Currently, I'm a colon and rectal uh, surgery fellow here at University of Texas at McGovern Medical School in Houston. Uh, this was some work that I did during my general surgery residency at William Beaumont Army Medical Center in El Paso, Texas. So we have no disclosures. So colon cancer continues to be a leading cause of cancer-related mortality in the United States. The NCCN provides evidence-based guidelines for the treatment of colon cancer. We all know that stage one colon cancer patients do very well with surgery alone, and that stage three patients clearly benefit from surgery followed by chemotherapy. What we don't know is how best to treat stage two patients. Older randomized controlled trials have failed to show significant survival advantage for stage two patients treated with adjuvant chemotherapy. Newer non-RCT data, however, have found that a subset of stage two patients, specifically those with high risk features of recurrence, may actually have a survival benefit when treated with adjuvant chemotherapy. Currently, there are no data to predict how much benefit stage two patients may receive from this chemotherapy though. Our objectives were to first understand recent trends and drivers for adjuvant chemotherapy utilization in stage two disease using the NCDB database, and then to examine uh, and quantify prognostic risk factors uh, for stage two population. Based on our identification of these independent prognostic factors, we sought then to create a clinical tool able to estimate the benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy in this stage two population. Depicted as our consort diagram for our study, we utilized the 2004 to 2015 National Cancer Database. We identified all adult patients with stage two colon cancer. We then selected patients with primary colon adenocarcinoma, signet cell, or mucinous histology. Patients with, uh, treated with neoadjuvant therapy of any type were excluded, and only patients surviving 30 days after their initial resection were retained. We started with 163,000 patients. We ended up with 133,000 patients after exclusion, uh, and so this is what we did our analysis on. We divided those 133,000 patients into two cohorts, those that received only surgery and then those that received surgery followed by chemotherapy. Multi, uh, multivariable logistic regression was used to identify independent factors predicting adjuvant chemotherapy use. Overall survival was assessed via Kaplan-Meier method, followed by utilization of the multivariable Cox proportional hazards modeling to identify independent risk factors of death. Statistical significance was set at the standard 005. All analyses were performed using our software. So we utilized uh, results from our Cox hazard modeling to create the mortality risk score this is a linear predictor utilizing the risk of 12 known and independent prognostic factors in colon cancer. The risk score is a number that denotes the patient's cumulative hazard or risk of death based on those 12 factors. The higher the number, the more hazard they have. Here are the basic demographics of our population. Compared to previous databank studies, our population was a little bit older, but still predominantly composed of white non-Hispanic patients. The study was fairly balanced with regard to gender, and most patients were healthy with a Charleston score of zero. The analysis of, of trends and drivers for chemotherapy use revealed older and sicker patients were significantly less likely to receive chemotherapy. On the contrary, patients with T4 pathology were nearly four times as likely to receive chemotherapy compared to those patients with T3 disease. Several other well-known prognostic factors that uh, are pretty commonly assessed in colon cancer are shown on the screen, and these were also predictive of receiving chemotherapy. Survival analysis revealed a uh, T4 tumor and an advanced comorbidity score to be the best predictors of decreased survival, but the other listed factors here were also st statistically significant. Now for the factors that increased the chance of survival, most, notice, most notably those patients that received uh, adjuvant chemotherapy were approximately 25% more likely to survive to five years after surgery than those stage two patients who received surgical resection alone. Mm -hmm. Younger and female patients also had increased survival. Our analysis revealed 12 independent prognostic factors associated with survival. All factors listed, except for female gender, are significantly associated with decreased survival. Each of those 12 factors, along with their hazard ratio in parentheses, are listed here. So this is uh, a uh, slight variation of the previous slide. This is uh, showing the 12 factors that were actually included uh, in that, for, that mortality risk score model that we created. The graphs depicted here show the cumulative risk needed to receive survival benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. On the left side of the screen is the scatter plot of hazard ratio of chemotherapy along the y-axis with the mortality risk score along the x-axis. As the risk score increases beyond 3.34, the hazard ratio of chemotherapy drops below one, indicating a survival benefit associated with chemotherapy at this level of risk. 
The graph on the right side of the screen shows the Kappa-Meyer survival curves for our population divided into risk-scored quartiles. The dotted lines represent patients within each quartile that received chemotherapy, and the solid lines represent, represent those that did not. Essentially, the graph is showing that the patient's cumulative risk score increases their survival benefit associated with adjuvant chemotherapy and becomes larger. And finally, here are the nomograms that help predict the survival benefit associated with chemotherapy. These nomograms can be used to predict mean three, five, and 10-year overall survival probability with and without chemotherapy use. All 12 previously discussed prognostic factors are represented. It is important to understand that these nomograms shown are the pictorial representation of mathematically calculated risk score. These nomograms allow for an estimation of absolute survival benefit obtained from the addition of adjuvant chemotherapy in stage two patients. Depicted here is the calibration curve for our nomograms. The graphs show an ideal calibration as the dotted line in the center of the graph. Good calibration is seen for three, five, and 10-year survival estimates. The discriminatory ability of the nomogram, or is known as the C-index, is 0 0.70. Clinically, this means that 70% of the time, the nomogram is accurately predicting who will have a survival benefit from the addition of chemotherapy. This value is on par with other clinically useful nomograms. Through our analysis, we found that all but the lowest risk stage two patients, those with risk scores less than 3.34, benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. NCCN does recommend consideration of adjuvant chemotherapy if one or more high risk features is present. In our study, nearly 70% of patients had at least one high risk feature. However, only one third of those patients received chemotherapy. Having more than one risk factor also did not significantly increase the chance of getting chemotherapy. The graph shown depicts percentage of stage two patients treated with adjuvant chemotherapy over the time period of our study. You can see it's fairly stable. In reviewing other data, a new meta-analysis out this year concluded that all comers with stage two cancer and high-risk features saw a significant survival advantage with adjuvant chemotherapy, but subgroup analysis revealed this benefit was attributable to certain high-risk features, namely T4 disease, suboptimal lymph node harvest, and intestinal perforation or obstruction at the time of surgery. Our nomograms allow for better individualized risk assessment by considering up to 12 factors simultaneously, not just a few. This cumulative risk assessment allows for accurate quantification of survival benefit if chemotherapy were to be provided. We feel this ability will significantly aid in the decision regarding adjuvant treatment in stage two colon cancer patients. There are limitations, namely a selection bias and incomplete data acquisition since this is a retrospective database review study. Uh, NCDB also has limited information about the specific chemotherapy regimens utilized, therefore assigning benefit to one regimen is not possible with the database. Also, in the same vein, survival analysis is limited. Uh, really, they, the database only provides overall survival, so disease-free survival and other breakdowns are not possible. We have only internally validated. Clearly, external validation is needed and encouraged. So in conclusion, we have developed a risk score and nomogram that provide individualized survival estimates for stage two colon cancer patients treated with and without chemotherapy. Our analysis supports adjuvant chemotherapy use in stage two patients with risk scores greater than 3.34. A well-designed RCT is obviously still needed to definitively answer this question. Thank you, I'll entertain any questions. Very, very nice presentation. Um, I have a question, but Dr. Stahl, do you wanna start us off? Absolutely. Thank you for a, a great presentation. Uh, I think this really highlights the power of database research. And while RCTs will always be the gold standard, there's a ton of information available from retrospective data mining like this. And it really gives us a great perspective on issues like effectiveness versus efficacy. I really just have two related questions. Uh, you briefly mentioned in your talk that around maybe 15% of patients uh, of all comers with stage two are receiving adjuvant chemo. Um, but when I looked at your median risk score, it was around 4.9, and you were showing a survival benefit for everybody greater than around 3.3. So I'm wondering, what, what does that translate to? Are, are you seeing a survival benefit in 70, 80% of patients, or am I misinterpreting that? Okay, um, thank you for the question. So what we're seeing, it, it's, it's given that the risk score is a pretty mathematically dense uh, calculation, uh, the nomograms there are the easiest way to, to view it. Um, as far as who is receiving, so 3.34 just in general terms is low risk patients. You don't need to hit on many of those factors to reach that level of uh, risk. And so essentially what this study is showing is that a fair amount of patients, a majority of patients are receiving some sort of survival, statistically significant survival benefit if given chemotherapy. Thank you. And then, so my follow-up to that is, um, 
with this big disconnect in those two those two numbers, I'm assuming that this knowledge has somehow changed the practice at your institution or the, the people who have been involved with this data. So what advice would you give to clinicians as to how their decision making might be impacted by the data that you found? When is a, because this is certainly a smaller survival benefit than we're seeing with stage three patients. When are you guys see, thinking that survival uh, is enough to warrant the sometimes adverse effects and certainly highly increased resource utilization of providing chemotherapy to that many patients? Yeah, another great question. I, th I think that the what this study, so uh, I unfortunately I haven't seen how this study actually impacted, affected the institution that uh, was produced out of because I left soon after it was, uh, was there, so I can't comment on that portion of the question. But um, I think what this study does, obviously it's not definitive, it's not a randomized controlled trial. Um, and so I, I don't think it's going to probably be a study that uh, is the definitive study for physicians to say like, yes, you 100% need chemotherapy if you have stage two disease and these risk factors. I do think what the study provides is one more piece of the puzzle, specifically for, for patients say that had T4 disease and less than 12 lymph nodes harvested. You know that a patient's gonna be at a, a much higher risk of recurrence than say a, just a standard T3 with say you know 20 nodes harvested. Um, and I think that by showing the hard numbers of survival as best we can with retrospective data, I think that may be enough for the physician and the patient to enter a conversation of, hey, with what we know, you may truly benefit, you know, because of your specific risk factors. Um, and, you know, I don't, but again, I don't, I don't think the study in and of itself is enough to say that all stage two patients need chemotherapy. I don't think we're there yet. Um, and, I, and I also think that, you know, this study is just getting to answering the specific question of, of, of stage two patients which ones specifically need it and which ones don't. And I, I think that this is just one step closer to answering that question.